Hello, I'm Skid from Wildscreen Gaming Forum. Today I'm going to be giving you a look at Torchlight 2. Torchlight 2 is a dungeon crawler uh, from Lunic Games, and unlike another AAA title released this year, it actually has proper multi-monitor support. There's pretty much only a couple of minor issues, but as you might be able to tell from this, well, you should be able to tell from this um, main menu, uh, this large space over here is caused by the fact that the menu or the game is rendered in horizontal plus and is at the correct resolution. If we go to the Marlot settings and we go here, we'll notice something quite neat. This this I've not actually seen done before. I've seen games that allow you to select, um, uh, what do they call it? It's, um, yeah, it's something device, primary or secondary um, device, but basically it's got monitor one and monitor two. Monitor two is actually my TV. Um, monitor one is my triple monitor setup. So all of these options are right in here from the get-go. I didn't have to do anything to get them in there, so that's always nice. So have it up at my maximum. Uh, I currently have the settings as high as they will go. The game itself doesn't actually um, require much processing power or GPU power to run. Uh, it's fairly kind on your GPU, um, but it's still a pretty game. Uh, and that's largely thanks to the way they've done the aesthetic. Um, you can see that it's a fairly smooth, well, yeah, it's a fairly smooth, it's not really crisp, but it's a smooth aesthetic. But there's not very many polygons here, so there's not much to render, and the textures are fairly... They're flat and they're blended well, but as I said, it's a good aesthetic, but it doesn't take much processing power, which is absolute, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. If it looks good, it looks good. So, other things in the option, we've got audio options here, obviously rebrandable controls, fair few of those. Uh, I've not changed any of these. Um, there's a few options in there that I need to be in game to show you because they're nice to see. So we'll log start. And look, button, it says LAN. You can play this game on LAN as well as play it offline in single player. Isn't that a novel idea? We'll do that. And here we are. In game as well is Horizontal Plus. Um, there's a kind of fog of war you can only see so far, so there's actually if there's uh, I think there's actually some up here, but yeah, if there's hostiles over here, you won't see them until you get a bit closer. There's nothing really wrong with that. Um, this menu down here, as you can see, the health is here, suddenly increasing, and here's my mana. And if we go back to the options, that's because of this thing here. If I turn that off, they go on to the far side of the screens which is where they would be if you was um, playing a single monitor or running on a single monitor. They'll be perfectly fine there, but as you can see, there wouldn't be much use here. Oops. But fortunately, because there is an option that will centre those, then they're in a nice convenient place where I can see them, which is good because they're kind of important. The only other important UI element that you can't centre, unfortunately, is your pet's health, which is up here. Um, there's no way that I've found to move it or centre it, which is a shame, but that's the only real issue I've seen. We've also got, uh, let me just put this back in the minimap. This minimap here can effectively be detached and put on the main screen, and you can either have it centred on the left hand side or on the right hand side. Now on a single monitor system that will put it either here, here or here, but because it's a triple monitor system it puts them over on the extreme edges, which is actually good because typically speaking I would have it sit in one more here, uh, a map like this, a translucent map like this, I'd normally have it sitting here, but because I can't move it, that one puts it closer to my eye line, so I have it over here. Uh, other things of note, um, there's effectively two menu pan panels, they appear on the left and right hand side, but they don't obscure the screen, so you could quite happily play the game with them open co constantly, but typically speaking I don't have either of them open, so we'll close them up. Okay. And now we're going to do a quick run through this dungeon. The um, game itself has four difficulty settings, settings from the uh, outset. I'm currently playing it on the second highest, which is Veteran. Um, there's one high, which is Elite. But since I don't play these types of games that often, I didn't really feel particularly confident in doing it. So... I've got it on Veteran, so... We'll see how we go. I've already died a few times, so at least it's presenting me with a challenge, which Diablo 3 didn't really do. 
at least not at the beginning. The only part of Diablo 3 that I played was up to the first boss. It was the um, effectively the demo. And the only thing that gave me a channel, ch any sort of challenge was that boss. The rest was pretty much a cakewalk. And from what I've heard from other people, um, that's pretty much the same throughout the game. Spam my attacks. I got a really cool, or the um, what do they call it? The pirate or Ember Mage? That's what they call it. The Ember Mage has a really cool um, channeling or charge ability, channeling ability. I forget what they're called. Ooh, a purple. I've not got one of those yet. Oh, that's the um, quest item, isn't it? Basically, after I've done a certain amount of damage, that bar in the centre will charge. And once it reaches um, full charge, then every spell costs zero mana to cost. So I can just spam spells continuously, which is a brilliant skill for this. My class. Particularly because it can get you out of really tricky situations. things and all of these, so I'll just tell you what, random one of them. I wonder what that bottle was, it wasn't labelled. Well this is an exceedingly short dungeon, who is it? Is it just that I've completed the only or the main task I came in here and the rest is just exploring? Welcome, human. Yeah, not really worth it, but we'll keep going. There's absolutely nothing wrong with exploring. I basically explored the entire of the first map. I'm the kind of person that likes to know what everything is. Pick up the ah yeah crossbow. I could use it. That's an interesting thing. Augment weapon. Augment, augment, augment. Isn't it? Yeah. I've not seen that before. In theory, I could use that, but I shall save it to put it in my stash in case I level up a ranged character. And the rest of that's all for jump. But we won't send my pet back yet. Did I explore all the top over here? Yeah, keep going now. Ah! I now have an enchanter back at the main base. That's a bit of a random thing. I picked up that bottle from over there and dropping it here has just dropped a load of stuff. Is that useful? 6 health studio. It's definitely better than what I've already got, so we'll put that in. Oh, balls! Gonna have to put more points into focus. Put that down there out of the way. We'll save that till I level. Running out of 
identification scrolls. Not useful for me. Not bad, but not useful for me, so that's that dungeon cleared. It's been said a lot before, but the loot is actually quite good because effectively all of this is... I'm still in Act 1. And I've got these two um, Twinferno one, ones, which are fairly nice. They give 15 da or 12% damage bonus on top of their normal stats. I did have, I don't know if I still have it, I think I got rid of it. Oh no, there we go. Plus 11 vitality. If we just have a look at exactly how many stats I've got, that's 50% more vitality. Uh, focus is currently just under 50 and dexterity is 22. So yeah, it's a fair amount from a fairly early drop. Not really sure what else to say. I mean, it's a dungeon crawler. You go through dungeons collecting loot. It's kind of the point. How close am I to leveling? Yeah, way off. I'll have a quick show you what my skills are. Um, basically, when you start as a, a um, Ember Mage, you start with this one here, which is Magnum Spear. Uh, it's your basic attack. This is that one here. Let me get up, to, up on top. This one here. Doesn't use a lot of mamage, ma mana. It's fairly spammable. The first one I got was this one here, Icy Blast, which is this one. Which is quite a good one as a first strike weapon because it has a high chance of freezing or slowing them down. But it also does a reasonable amount of damage as well. Um, the next one here, Pris Prismatic Bolts. In there? Yeah, Prismatic Bolts, which is this one here. This is my favourite one. This one does a huge amount of damage, more than it actually appears like it should do, particularly if you shoot at point-blank range. But the main thing with this one is that it has a random chance of inflicting poison, burn, shock or freeze. So <laughs> that's always nice. And if I level it up quite high, it's going to increase the chances of that. But because there's effectively five bolts, that's five chances for any one of those effects. Or I'm not sure if it's any one of those effects or all four of them. I have seen it apply all four before. The other skills I've got is Hailstorm, which is this one here, which is a large AoE attack. Uh, I think that, yeah, that's a chance of freezing as well. Um, the one that I recently got is this one here, Frost Phase, which is my teleportability, or my dodge ability. That will actually do damage both at the location I went from and the location I went to, and also has a chance of freezing as well. Yep, and knockback in knockback, because I didn't know it does that. Uh, the passives I've got is Frozen Fate. Um, this one, when I kill an enemy, it has a random chance of freezing up to four enemies nearby it. Ice Band just increases my ice damage. Prismatic Rift is another interesting one. This one here, uh, if something hits you, it has a percentage chance of warping that target away. So, basically, if they hit you, they'll be teleported. And I think it, yeah, it has a chance of adding a random effect. But this one here, Wand of Chaos, is particularly nice. It has a random effect, or it has a chance of, it says bizarre effect on strike, but what it means is it can activate any spell from within the game when I either use a basic wand attack, that attack, or that attack, or the one I don't have yet, shock bolts. So if I hit anything with that, it has a random chance of um, casting any other spell in the game, which is pretty nice. Let's see if I can get it to do it. That's not going to do it now. Have I been over there yet? No, I haven't. Did you need something?
I've already done that. <laughs> Never mind. Still got a bit of time left until I need to, or would need to start splitting the video up, so we'll just go exploring for a bit. We'll head back in this direction. Damn it, they've got a mage. Ah, out of mana. on the pet. It's not giving me a random effect now. There's one. I've not picked up a golden key, have I? I'll have to keep searching. There'll be one about somewhere. Ooh, pay attention to where I'm going. That ain't good. That is definitely not good. <laughs> Unlimited power! Damn it, he can teleport as well. I would say that isn't wouldn't be fair if it wasn't the fact that I could do it. And now I'm out of inventory space. So now is a good time to send my pet off to sell my crap. Uh, get rid of all the whites. Oops, that was a green, but I don't think it was any use anyway. No, it's no better than the ones I've got. Uh, nope. 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 Ooh, I can use that. Uh, nope. 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 Uh, I probably need some pots. Oh no, I'm good on pots. Somehow, I must be picking them up fairly red readily. Have I picked up any spells recently? No, never mind. Right, send my pet off to sell my crap. Which is a very useful feature. Anyway, I think I'll leave it there. Um, as I said, there's not really much else I can add to what other people have said or what I've said already. It's a, it's a dungeon crawler, hack and slash dungeon crawler. But I do like the style of it. And certainly some of the spells are quite crazy and a bit ridiculous. Uh, I like the fact that there's a nice difficulty level because effectively, uh, as I said, when I played through um, 
uh, Diablo 3, the beginning of Diablo 3, I didn't really die much. Whereas this one's killed me multiple times already. Um, I think I made it through the first boss okay, but yeah, I still got killed a few, been killed a few times, so... That is not a bad thing to be challenged. You don't gain or you don't improve by not being challenged. And certainly being able to challenge yourself immediately is better than having to wait through the entire game a couple of times to ch challenge yourself. But, yeah. If I had to say anything, I consider this game better than Diablo 3. Which is <laughs> pretty much says it all. There's not much else I can add about it. There's nothing inherently wrong with Diablo 3, it's just this is a much more fun experience for me. So I'll leave it at that. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you like this video, please subscribe and like the video. Um, if you didn't like it, please tell me why. Um, I'm trying to improve my videos as much as I can, but I can't really do that unless people give me feedback. So please do give me feedback if you like it. If you don't like it, just let me know. And again, thank you for watching. See you next time.